Hello and welcome to this episode of Al's Garage. We are continuing work on our 1943 Willie Zimby project and this is the second in my series of videos discussing bodywork uh, as it relates to metal uh, pounding and hammering and all that fun stuff and Willie. So this is an episode where we're going to take this body frame and we're going to hit all the little miscellaneous things there's a couple of little cracks there's some holes that need to be filled uh, and then there's a little patch uh, and repair that needs to be done here on the frame so we're just going to start uh, jumping into it and let's get started the first project we'll tackle today is fixing this these are threaded holes that hold the bottom brace for the front fender. So when I was taking this out, this had just had too much moisture and corrosion to be salvageable. And unfortunately, I can't seem to reach them here from the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out a little section and I'm gonna patch in a new section that'll have the sheet metal that's been drilled as well as the nuts that are welded behind it. Now. I wish there was another way for me to make this repair, but given the fact that there's really not much access on the back side, I can't think of one, but with a welder and the right measurements, that'll be the key. Uh, so I'm gonna make a template here. Uh, with, with all of that, I think I can make a repair that is sufficient and strong. So we will get started working through that.
So next up, I have roughly seven holes here, 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 etc. on each of these rear wheel wells. So I'm going to go in from behind with my welder, fill those in, and that should check that off the list. Let's roll. So one thing to note, as I start my welding, I'm using a copper spoon, I think that's what you call them, uh, to place it on the back side so that when I weld, it's easier for me to fill in the hole, which I will then grind smooth and remove all the uh, extra stuff, getting it nice and metal smooth. So uh, here's what I did as I took a, a copper fitting, a plumbing fitting, and uh, bent it. Um, you can buy copper spoons for welding on Amazon for like 30 bucks, or you could do this for a buck and a half. So that's what I did. Anyway, uh, let's get started with this. One of the things that we'll have to overcome is one of the bolts sheared off as I was taking the front fender off from where it meets the body. So I've already taken some time and have removed the nut from behind that, uh, but what I'd like to do is weld the new nut in. Now, in order to do that, uh, what I like to do first is take the bolt I'm gonna use and I take a secondary nut and I thread that nut down about halfway or more and then I stick that in the bolt hole and then I take my nut that's going to be welded and I thread that in all the way so that the end of the bolt is flush with the nut. You don't want it sticking too far up out of the nut and you don't want it sticking too far down uh, because at that point th the threads would be a, hot, a lot more likely to uh, become available to 
have uh, some extra welding material melt to them. So you definitely don't want that to happen. Uh, so having it flush is key. And then you take your secondary nut that's already on there uh, and then you hand tighten it down so that it locks it into place. And that should give you a nice clean nut that's ready to weld and is essentially clamped in place by the secondary nut and the bolt. So we're gonna do that on this and it should hopefully go pretty smooth. Next up is welding the holes here on this step, and if you hadn't seen any of our previous videos, this is a 1943 Willys MB that was purchased by the owner of this vehicle in 1957, and he still obviously owns a vehicle. Now, he purchased it here in the Phoenix area from a place called Acres Drive-In on Van Buren Road. Obviously, it's long gone, but he told me that when he purchased it, this was a vehicle that was owned by the drive-in and they had spotlights mounted mm -hmm. here and on the other side, a couple more holes we'll need to close up. But it's kind of interesting seeing these, you know, when we were looking at the Jeep, he was saying, oh yeah, these are the holes where they had the spotlight uh, when I bought it in 1957. So uh, a lot of times you open up a Jeep and you find random holes. Uh, here it's nice to have a story behind them. So let's get those welded up. So with all my holes in the rear fender well repaired, as well as the holes in the step in this crack repaired, I should be good to go, except I need to do all of those things on the driver's side. So let's turn it around and get it done. So we have a crack right here, four holes, and it looks like these two need to get hammered and smoothed out and then I'll throw a little weld in here and in here uh, and then probably re-drill those out just to uh, clean that up a bit. Let's do that.
with the holes plugged on the rear wheel well. That pretty much wraps it up for this video. Again, this was some of our odds and ends within the frame and the body uh, as we try to get all of our welding and hammer work done. Uh, next time we're going to be tackling the rear passenger's wheel well and doing some repairs there. Thanks again. I hope you found this video valuable and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.